Diddly do, diddly do, diddly do, diddly do, diddly do, diddly do. Hi, I'm Rick Glassman with another episode of Take Your Shoes Off. And in this episode, we talk about pisses, cums, shits, and stand up. Special guest, Ali Muskowski. Makowski. <laughs> well, welcome to Take Your Shoes Off. My name's Rick Glassman. Our guest is Ali Muskowski. Makowski. Makowski? Makowski. Can I do a bit? Yeah. Okay. Okay, you have to get the punchline, right? I set it up. I knock it down. I've been doing it my whole life. Okay. Easy. When I was in the fifth grade, I had a hernia, and the doctor said I was probably born with it, and it was in a very, like, private area. It was by my... That's where hernias are. Yeah, vagina, and yeah. I was a young girl. I'm in fifth grade, so I get hernia surgery, and the doctor... um you know, brings me back to my mom and my mom says, hey, is that scar going to be there forever? And the doctor says, if you're talking about the uh, actual incision, it'll be covered by pussy hair. But if you mean the trauma of having a hernia that you felt you were born with and there's nothing you could do about it, you're going to be carrying that and talk about hernias. You're carrying a heavy load. You'll probably get another one. It's not her fault that she had a hernia, but it's her privilege to be able to get it fixed. My name's Rick Glassman with special guest Ali Makovsky. Cut to three hours earlier. Earlier, 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 earlier. When I was just a lit. No, keep doing earlier. Earlier, 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 earlier. So keep that thing on the floor just in case a coffee spills. Okay. You know what I'm gonna Yeah, this is a nice rug. You know what I'm gonna do? Where'd you get the rug? What'd you ask? Where'd you get the rug? We'll be right back after a word from Marshall Rug Gallery. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. I'm so, I have so many questions for you. This is essentially me being a guest on your podcast, but I end up asking you all of the questions. Perfect, because I prefer to talk as much as possible. Okay, great. Scoot do, blabbity blue, scoot do. person i almost called you a bitch that's okay i almost said a low energy bitch i am are you yeah an leb yeah um but i'm gonna have a little bit of a of a chocolate mm. um i have actual weed if you'd like to take a hit i have chocolate if you like or just nothing no i'm good with this cold brew i'm not gonna take that much it hit i could see it in your eyes it takes a little bit before i'm gonna kick in off to another one Fucking checking in for work, baby. Hi. Hey, thanks for coming over. Thanks for having me over. You are a um, you, a. I'm on Discord. Do I'm on Discord? Discord. Oh well, we'll put both of our Discord uh, invites in the description, unless yours is private. Mine is private because I, I have a lot of creepy dudes on mine. I accidentally made it public. I was like, okay, I'm gonna make a Discord. I'm gonna make it just for my Patreon people. But then I got so excited that I set up the Discord, that I put it on my Instagram, and then immediately I was like, right. I don't know who needs to be a mod right now. I don't know who I can trust because there's a lot of stuff going down that I can't. Um. What is it with, with female comedians who just, I, I guess the people who like comics are, could you get the phone off the couch? I'm sorry. Yeah. I don't need, I don't can need I put no. it right here? I, you shouldn't have it by your body. Just put it next to you on the, on the blanket. I wash the blanket after each okay. guest. Let's not, keep, keep it closer. Fantastic. The comedian, female comedians, yeah, always have creepy guys all around them. Yeah. Why? Because I don't know. There's like part of me that wants to be like, oh, it's kind of my fault because like I'll post cute pictures of myself, but I'm like, that shouldn't be. We'll put up some examples of what cute pictures are she's talking about. Oh, I'm excited to see which pictures. Well, you're you gonna deem... send them to me. You're gonna oh. you're gonna tell me which the cute ones are. Okay. Oh. I was hoping that oh. it wouldn't be my choice. Well, that's the thing. And that's that's a big part of growth that I love that you brought up. Because when you think about it, many things are out of our control. But at the same time, everything that is in our control is our choice. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Hello, I interrupt this uh, podcast. Why am I asking? My dad's here, by the way. I'm at home. This is all of his hardware behind me. 
and you might hear his voice. So if if you hear something like Boogaloo. What is that? Like a dance move, right? It is the name of a dance. Your mom was great at it at one time. What happened? They stopped playing Boogaloo music. So she'd still be good at it if they played the music? No question about it. You heard it here first. Anyway, today's episode is brought to you by Helix. You want a good night's sleep? You want a good night's sleep? Yeah, what about you? What about me what? You want a good night's sleep? After I do the Boogaloo. It sounds like, is, are we, am I sure that's not a racist term? There's something about, oh, I know what I'm thinking of. I think that... Uh, Destiny's Child does a song about bugaboo. And if you combine the boogaloo with a bugaboo, I think there is something. I remember there's a term in Back to the Future. If I'll tell you what, if I'm accidentally saying something racist and I have to then like, that's it, Rick is done for a while, I know at least I'll be able to relax on a nice mattress because our sponsors, Helix, is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows by visiting helixsleep.com slash Tyso. That's up to $200 off all mattresses and two free pillows by visiting helixsleep.com slash Tyso. And we're back. So I I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't. Oh, cute. No one's buying them. Why? I don't know. I, Betty thinks they're a little too childish. I like the kind of 90s color and vibe of it. Yeah. Also, I've never really promoted it, but. I love a white hat. Well, this has been used, but if you're interested, it'll be my pleasure to give you one. Yeah. Um, at the regular price. Okay. <sighs> okay. No, no, no. Please. How much are you selling them for? Too, more, too much because hmm. they're so expensive they're so expensive yeah. that's the thing with merch is i feel like i'm robbing people but at the same time it's like i'm robbing myself how are you robbing yourself i buy mine in limited quality so i quantity. pay quant oh yeah horrible limited. saleswoman i buy mine in limited quantity but i get really good quality well i don't do what you do i do direct a garment so yeah, that's nice it's easier but my margins are crazy so i'm making very little money on it but well i've done direct to garment too yeah i i, I it's better yeah. unless you sell enough yeah which i'm almost there yeah so if you guys buy more but also you know what i end up doing i end mm. up giving promo codes out constantly boobs 10 percent off or i just send people stuff a lot but let's get back into the guys or let's not i i am interested i don't want to harp on this because i don't want to invite trolls over to you but i am curious um discord mm. i also have you know a lot of guys asking for pictures of my asshole and stuff is that true well you know pictures That's of funny fun videos yeah. which is just as vulnerable sure but i have i have a discord and then i have a an exclusive ro uh, rooms in the discord yeah so people on the general discord which i still pop into they could talk about whatever they talk about but then everybody who's in the patreon exclusive they're kind of like I, I i don't even they're well behaved yeah, the Patreon people are the best. Yeah, but I do have a lot of cool content up there. Yeah, I do a, Z a monthly Zoom call. I do those sometimes. Yeah, with the top tier, and it's really fun. But hold on. Let's not talk about all the BTS before okay. we talk about the... What's the opposite of BTS? Front and center? FAC? Uh, yeah. Behind the scenes, in front of the scenes, right? In the scenes. Let's get more in the scene. Okay. Who are you? Um, I'm Allie. I'm 25. I do stand up. I don't know. Like in what sense? Yeah, that was it. Those are the big three. Okay. And you're, uh, you invited me on your podcast. Yeah. Which made me want to invite you on mine. I appreciate it. I'm, uh, I shout out your podcast all the time on my podcast. Of all of the comedian podcasts, which one would you want to go on the most? I would want to go on Take Your Shoes Off, Rick Glassman's podcast, because I would be so excited to see how he edits it after. Edits it after? Yeah. Um, and I think Rick is really funny and cool. That's why I was bringing up Discord. People at Discord sent the clip of you shouting it out. And before they sent the clip, people were asking to have you on. <gasps> and then since then, people are having to ask you on. Oh, that's nice. And then Betty's like, why don't you have an alley? I'm like, yeah. We also don't know each other that well, mm -mm. so I could imagine, because I'm the same way, where if I don't know someone that well, I get a little bit nervous asking them to be on my podcast. I need to stop the momentum. I can hear you keep talking. I want to press mute on okay. my computer. Okay. Um, or you can wait for me. I'm waiting. Okay. Well, uh, you don't have to edit that out, but put it in fast forward, but not too fast where we couldn't understand it. I would say two times at most, maybe 150. Hell, fuck it. Even 125% fast forward. And we're back. Hundred dollar hats, by the way. Hundred dollar hats? No. Oh my gosh. So 
you you don't like asking people that you don't know because you're embarrassed? No, not because I'm embarrassed. Just because sometimes I worry that maybe I'm not going to have the most to talk to them about because I don't know what our dynamic is. And so then I don't want to bring on this weird dynamic onto a podcast. Have you had a weird dynamic? Yeah. What does that go like? And could you tell me with whom? No. Give me everybody but the person. Um, so there was someone I had on the podcast who I was like friends with on Instagram who I find very interesting and I never, no, and I never like had a real conversation with them, but I just assumed that we were going to like hit it off, have a lot in common or whatever. And then, uh, when they did the podcast, I just, it wasn't bad. It just like, it, it was difficult. It was more than I it was uh, more difficult than I expected. Did the person, do you think they shared in the feeling or do you think they just... Well, didn't? they didn't share the podcast on social media in any way. How do you feel about when people don't share the podcast? I don't mind. But like, I imagine if it goes well, you would be like, oh, this is a podcast I did where I look good in it and it's a good podcast, but I know hard feelings. What's your thing? Like you have a... Um, like I guess I should I would made a face. Uh, you're like very low energy, but you're not. Not that low energy is boring. You're very low energy, but like you're still always moving. Yeah. Um, your stand up is that way. I I like you. Um, do you? I do. Yeah. Wow. Um, shout out to John Dewalt. We'll put his Instagram handle up here. Uh, he does too. I don't know if he remembers, but he saw you twice and we were laughing. He's like, "Oh yeah, she's funny." Yeah, you guys were laughing really hard, and I look up to you, Good. which is why I'm not looking you in the eyes when I say that. And so, when you saw me perform with John, you guys were laughing really hard, and I'm like so insecure and self conscious that I went up to you guys after and I'm like, why are you guys laughing so hard? What what is being self insecure and self conscious? Because to I do thought with? you guys were like laughing at me and not with me. Because well, I'm you like, you weren't doing that no on purpose, were you? What? I'm just joking. <laughs> I was pretending <laughs> that we were the mean one. Yeah. No. And also, the whole laugh with laugh at thing, it's all perspective of the person who's being laughed with or laughed at laughed it at. It's the same yeah. thing. It feels better when you're laughed with. But anytime someone's laughing at you, if you laugh too, you're then they're laughing with you. Yeah, but I guess when you're not in the headspace of being, when you're like expecting it to be laughed with. And that's where we come back to, it's all a choice. Mm. I like this podcast because you are, you, you make guests question everything. I feel like every guest who comes on here starts to like really internalize yeah, what you ask. But what happens if they don't share it on social? <laughs> do I take that personally? Do you? No. Mm. But I do want them to share it. I want them to want to share it. Yeah, of course. And like this podcast, I'm not going to talk too much about this. Don't worry. It's a lot of work. Yeah. So though I feel like anybody, you included, coming over is doing me a favor. I mean, you're driving over at the time that I'm suggesting to help me make content that I'm now making money off of. Also, look at this cool thing that you have now. And when people don't share it, it does make me question inviting them back. Mm. And I, I, I don't think I've ever articulated that to myself until just now. Um, yeah. Because I'm why not? I'm sharing the shit out of this. Yeah, you shared it before it even came out. You put it on your Insta story this morning. And I'm like, because I normally don't. Sometimes I'll reveal a day or two before. But I normally don't because I don't know why. Yeah. So then I said to you, what did I say to you? I said, uh, this was a confident choice to share it. And then you're like, do you want me to take it down? I'm like, no, I guess it doesn't matter. It was just because I, I for some reason, I thought we were doing it at 10 a.m. So I got here super early. Yeah. And then I looked over our text after I texted you that I had parked and realized that I was three hours too early. You texted me parked, but then, then you didn't so text me after. Oops, I got here early. I had to figure that out from your Insta story. Because I was dread. because it didn't send through. It didn't say delivered after I said parked. And then I had like a crisis. That made you nervous? Oh my God. It made me so Oh, how nervous. flattering. Yeah. Really? Because yeah. why? Oh, Rick thinks I got here early? Yeah. 
That's crazy. Because it was so early. And then I was just like embarrassed that I didn't. I hate when I'm not on time or too early for something or like don't look over my text and make sure that everything's like ready to go. And so I was like, oh, this is just embarrassing. I got to know what what that is. Why do you look up to me? Um, also, I ask you that like. Like you could think about this for a minute. Yeah. And we could fast forward. No, I already know. Okay. Um, I think, well, I started comedy kind of young. Boring. Why do you look up to me? And when I started stand-up, I used to go to like the Laugh Factory a bunch. What's young? 18? 19. Yeah, but I would go to the Laugh Factory when I was like 17. Because that's, that's the only club in LA that lets people under 18 in, right? If they're a comedian. No, I wasn't a comedian at the time. I was using my sister's expired ID. Oh. Yeah. It was fine. No, I thought I had a sneeze. Mm. Go on. <laughs> and you're so funny. And so I would go to the Laugh Factory a bunch and like, I don't know. It, I feel like the first, I don't remember the first time I saw you, but obviously you don't necessarily do like traditional stand up. Hey there. Uh, how you doing, little Rick? Hey, you guzzling mother butt bitch. Oh, you don't say. I didn't know you shaved. You shave your ass too? What? Oh, no, I shaved my beard, not my mustache. Piece of bag. F dirty Oh, you can't say that, Puppet Rick. You big got a little dick. <laughs> and we're back. I, yeah, exactly. Just like that. And... <laughs> okay, I'm going to go ahead and interrupt you for the fifth time. I asked you why you look up to me, and then I interrupted you to do a bit. Now I'm, now I'm feeling that, that insecure text. Is that that's all too much? No, I think that's great. I'm going to ask you about this later. Go ahead. Okay. Um, and then I feel like when I saw your stand up, I was like, whoa, this is so fun and different. And then just seeing you perform a bunch after that, every set was always like very exciting to watch. Have you seen me perform a bunch? Because I, I feel like I the only time I do shows with you, I feel like I've done five shows with you and they've all been at the Ice House. No. I've also done one. I also, that's not true. Also, I remember we did it at the comedy store. Yeah, in the belly room. Yeah. And then I've seen you go up in the original room at the comedy store and in the um, other room at the improv and at Cantor's. When and you were listening to the Lion King soundtrack. I listened to very calm, pretty music before going on stage. What song from the Lion King is calm? I listen. Well, I mean, really? Everything except for number five in Scar's song, I, I guess. I've been listening to I Just Can't Wait to Be King recently. The original. I don't know if it's the original. There's so many versions. Well, the original one, um, the kid's voice, who is can't be JTT, right? No. It's a, it's so good. And then when he becomes an adult, it's what's his name uh, from Ferris Bueller's Day Off? Matthew Broderick. Thank you. Great voice. You know, good voice. Yeah. Fine voice. But the kid in Lion King, the Simba as a kid singing, whoever, it's it's so fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Did you ever think that, who's the guy who sings Donka Shane? Wayne Newton? Donka Shane, darling. Oh, you have a pretty voice. Thank I don't you. want to do too much, though, because. I don't, oh, yeah, copyright. Money. It happens. It's yeah. crazy. How talented whoever wrote that program is. I know. Do you think they watch all of it? It's it's an it's it's a frequency of the algorithm. Mm. It's um, I had Josh Groban on and we were singing stuff. And you guys look so much alike. I know. It is insane. Uh, I've been getting that my whole life, so it was yeah. fun to have him on and we like switched places. Uh, give it up for the wonderful Mr. Josh Groban. But he's singing songs. I'm playing the piano. It's uh, and I had an orchestra outside. And uh, I would cut to a clip, but I'm not getting it. I can't then advertise. I'm not one of those. Yeah, that's They sucks. figured it out, and it's just like a live performance in my living room. Uh, but you started out doing blah, 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 yada, yada, so on and so forth, and then you thought that I was different. What is the, I guess opposite of like front and center what would be the opposite different like what are the other comedians that you're seeing where what is what i am doing and more specifically what is it that they are doing that is 
default. I felt like I was so exposed to like um, comics who were doing like these jokes where it's almost like an equation where it's like set up punchline or like story with callbacks throughout it or some sort of like weaving storyline like structure you're talking about yeah that's was, a good thing though isn't it yeah it's great but then i feel like yours although there is like a structure to it in your own way it wasn't like what i had seen before like uh i have a new joke that i've never done before can i try it for yeah you? please uh i got my first shot mm-hmm. um so i'm half vaxxed and i'm half not so part of me has really good credit and the other part of me hates dating Jewish girls or I don't know I haven't figured it out yet but what do you think what's going on nothing fuck stand up's hard I know isn't it yeah it really is are you making a living from it yeah 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 why um because I work hard I monetize my podcast <laughs> the podcast is doing is helping with your living not really but it's helping to a small degree when did you decide that you were uh able to do this does that make sense yeah um I think when I started stand-up I just knew that I had to make it work and this was the only thing I wanted to do and so then when I was working a bunch of uh bad jobs in order to live on my own and do stuff and do stand-up um I finally had a job where I was like okay this is going to be my last food service job and well we have a surprise for you I get to work at a food service we got your job at the Cheesecake Factory Cheesecake Factory come on in and then what would happen is I'll sit in front of the computer for 10 minutes tops and I'll think, how could we animate the Cheesecake Factory coming in? And I won't think of anything. And I'll be like, do I, I have to, do I edit that out? And then I'll send it to a couple of people, ask their thoughts on stuff. And then ultimately we'll just, during this entire time, I will probably just had uh, a goblin chef wearing a Cheesecake Factory apron and hat come in and take a dump all over us. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And that's basically, that's the behind the scenes. Yeah. All right. Thank you. And no need to snap. Okay. Snapping is coming in and leaving, but he just made He was it. just in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And also uh, when, he, when he came in, he was wearing an apron. You know when hot girls uh, in movies, when they want to surprise their boyfriend for like the anniversary, yeah. they'll make him cookies and she'll wear an apron. But There's nothing underneath. But you don't know that until she turns around and you see her ass and, it's, and depending and there's nothing wrong with it. Pussy... Some of the pussy, you know, sometimes you could see a little I've bit. I've never of, seen lips in a movie. I guess, I guess I'm not, it's a, it's a secret reveal. This happens to me all the time. But sometimes when a, when a woman turns around, you, you could just see the butt. But then sometimes you could also see the, the, this part. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm thinking. Like the, the goblin when he's coming, um, uh, well, when he's entering, uh, I, I think it might be fun. <laughs> Can to we s- make him? Uh, yeah, open your mouth. Um, wait, hold on one sec. Uh, I would like to get the, the lettuce cups, uh, but no peanut sauce, extra Thai, uh, Thai, uh, what's it called? Cam- the green sauce and the red sauce, the Thai chili sauce. Um, oh, and uh, two, uh, only brown breads, none of the white breads. Go ahead. Is that how you do it? Mm-hmm. Yeah? You, no, normally- you act like you're being stabbed? Yeah, I, I get scared because it's like a weird surprise party. What do you mean? Like when when cum happens, you get kind of a heads up. Like, you know, at a surprise party, you're like, I have a feeling I'm going to get home. All the lights are off. But you still get scared, you know, just because that many people saying surprise at one time is overwhelming. That's yeah. kind of how I react. That's a good. That's good. Do you do that on stage? No, I just I'm thought gonna of do it. it. I'm going to try that. Okay. I'll let you know. Yeah. Here's the thing. Have you ever really been the subject of a surprise party? No. And it How makes you know? me really sad because I've seen them in movies. Right. Just like you've seen in movies. This is, is like a nutsack. This <laughs> is a... Um, yeah, that's a great that's a great analogy. But when you get surprised when it happens, if you know it's going to happen and you don't want it to happen, why why don't you just stop and say this isn't for me? What do you mean? Why wouldn't I want a surprise party? Then what are you complaining about? I'm not complaining. Well, what did you... You said you get scared. 
Yeah, when that many people are doing one thing, oh, I that's thought, like... I thought you were being intimate with one guy. You're talking about a gangbang. Oh, yeah, I see what you mean. This is getting, you know what? This is getting too crass, especially for somebody who has a Discord that she's made yeah. completely private. And I really want you to open up your Discord to the public. Okay. Um, but it's just like people like talking about how great you are it's, or whatever. Yeah, that's the thing that's so confusing is like... I don't know. It's it's. I feel like I could wear turtlenecks every day and talk. <laughs> Is that comfortable? It's a little bit itchy. Yeah. Oh, that's that's gonna be frame by frame now. Oof. Go on. Um, and talk about like loving and worshiping God, but wait, still, I don't remember what we're talking about. I don't know either. What are you talking Can about? Can we start and over? I don't. I don't. Know. I don't know. I think we got. We could use some of this. Okay. But now, up until this moment, this entire podcast was in two times fast forward. Oh, that's great! Yeah. I listen to my podcast. I have to do it in two times if I'm like going through it or something. Yeah, because you talk so slow. I talk so slow. Yeah. Do you, Rick? Okay, Rick, um, what do you think... How did you switch from do you to what do you think? Those I don't know. Are be I'm two trying separate to, questions. I was trying to form what I was going to ask. Are you searching for something to ask? No, I'm trying to figure out how to word this. Like okay. when you started stand-up, did you always have kind of the same style? Obviously, like you've evolved, I imagine, in some way. But like I feel like I'm super low energy. I don't know if it's my diet or just my personality or something. It's but probably like, your diet. You think so? You don't eat enough fish. I don't like fish. There you go. There's a saying that um, if you want to scale the walls to energy, you must consume the protein of those with scales. You've never heard that? No. Maybe I made it up. I, I eat sushi. Don't you get wild after eating sushi? No, I get really gassy. You know, I want to normalize women and poops and farts yeah because i dated a girl mm -hmm. for a while and uh do you stay in relationships for a long time if if i'm digging them okay <laughs> you know yeah i don't stay in it if i'm not liking it okay i look at relationships kind of like uh surprise parties where like you know you get in you probably have one a year at most and uh, they taste like cum. But what I was going to say is I dated a girl for from uh, from December through the next year until the following January. Mm -hmm. So 14 months. 15 months if you add an extra month. Fuck 16 months if you add two. Why not? But she didn't poop in front of me. In fact, she was married at one point. And While you guys were dating? No. This was before we got together. Yes, before we got together. And she didn't... Uh, they had a house together. And she never once pooped when her husband was home. She would leave in the morning to go across the street to a coffee shop to poop. And did I notice a red flag? Yes. Did I listen to it? I was young. I didn't know better. Yeah. But it blows my mind. Wait, but why do you think that's a red flag? Well, there were other red flags that I... That I uh, uh, I collected. Mm. Um, but looking back at it, uh, it's not enough to, it's not really red flag, but I will say somebody who, uh, a type of person who is that ashamed of something so typical, in fact, n n humanly necessary, uh, it does beg the question of, because um, shame could make you do things, mm -hmm. you know? It does beg the question of what happens when in shame? What are you hiding? Why are you hiding? What don't you... Tr I mean, it's not enough on its own. I'm, I'm building this out of out of knowing other character traits. Yeah. Although I'm sure she's great. You know, we just weren't but good for each other and, blah, blah, and everything. And but like, don't... But what else? Like, what do you... Well, what, what can't you show? How come you can't... What can't you... What else can't you show me? Well, I think that there's something about like in a relationship, I guess everyone's different, but I know some people like don't want to, I mean, going across the street and not pooping in your own home is weird, but like, I know people who are like, 
I prefer that to be like a private thing. So I leave kind of like mystery and like just, you know, not. But I feel like if you're with someone, like just if you're doing nasty things together, do nasty things in private. I'm gonna close this. Okay. What do you think about um like farting in front of a girlfriend or boyfriend? Like, do you think that is too much? No, I think I th I think that there is. I think it it's a boundary thing. It depends on the couple. Yeah. I could never be with somebody who I can't. I mean, I I'm fart. Betty, uh, my girlfriend, f laughs every time. So you know, it's what a what a win. Yeah. But anybody, yeah, I, I just I fart. Does she fart in front of you? Not much. I don't think she doesn't fart much. She takes three shits a day though. Whoa. Yeah. Solid. Yeah. Damn. She's very. She eats a lot of apples. She's big into uh, things that make you go poop. Did you know that your poop is supposed to be S shaped? Um, it depends on the the shape of your colon. Tall people, their colons are are straighter, so it's more of mm. like the number one. Yeah. <laughs> no. Um, I think I, snot just came out. If if you could um, zoom in on it when I. Thank you. Is there a way to potentially zoom in in case you can see it on cam? Uh, yeah, we'll do that now while you're cleaning up. We'll do a picture in picture. Oh, yeah, there it is. I think snot just came out. What would be great? If the goblin, if if you can see the snot, if he came back and it looked like that was his. The thing is, we've already done some animation, a lot of Cheesecake Factory okay. stuff, and respectfully, you know, there's nothing wrong with it. I feel like I'm one of these people too. I don't think that this episode is going to get the big numbers that's going to allow to pay the extra money for the I animation. I understand. I understand. You know? I understand. If an episode isn't, if I don't feel that I'm getting 70,000 views on it, I try to keep the animation budget to... Sorry, I'm not Kristen Bell. Uh, I just watched Batman. What made you say that? Wasn't she on the pod? Oh, I thought you said Christian Bale. Oh, that would be so cool. Guess what? No, uh, I, I knew you said Christian Bale and I made a joke. You're good. Isn't it amazing that you, like, you, could, you could look at a comedian and be like, wow, he's so great. And then you sit in his living room and you realize, yeah, <laughs> isn't that cool? Yeah. So why, back to... Have you always been like this quick? Like when you were young? Each other's sentences. <laughs> Go ahead. Uh, when you were young, were you like, all, like also quick? I have a clip. But the point that I'm getting at is you could fall in a bucket of milk and call yourself the, the guy. Or you could choose to stir that milk, put a little chocolate in, and thank the heavens, man, because you got yourself a glass of chocolate milk. <laughs> I can't wait to see how this comes out. It will be fine. Yeah. But no, I didn't get quick until I was 25. I remember exactly when it happened. Really? Mm-hmm. What happened? I was playing softball, and I got hit in the head, and I woke up, and I started seeing words. Not literally seeing like what you're seeing on the screen now, but, and also for the screen, you could just, so you don't have to do words, you could, but we could just take that filter where they do on Instagram where it's like math problems and triangles and it's, you know, we'll figure it out, we'll see. Uh, but I started seeing like patterns of, of like phrases and, and things to where I'm not thinking of stuff. I'm not remembering stuff. I'm not being quick. It's just like I have teleprompters mm. of energy. And that happened when you were 25. Yeah. And ever since then, I've just been like, ask me anything. Um, who is Each other sentences. I could do that almost at any time. Yeah. Name, name a number. I bet you I know it. 12. Yep. Ask me another number. 32. That's right. You know what 12 and 32 have in common other than they both end in two? What? They're divisible. Yeah. Hi. Not by each other. Yeah. I don't know if the weed kicked in. I don't think it has. I think what's happening. I feel like this is you. I feel what's happening is I feel like I am, I am, uh, I, we mm -hmm. have given me permission to just like, just sit in it. Yeah. I haven't sat in it in a while. I mean that in a nice way. I haven't like, I haven't sat in it in a little bit. I want to, I want to not sit in it too much because I don't think it makes for a good podcast, but like I'm feeling really playful right now.
That's good. I just feel like I'm uh, I'm not quick enough. So then I just each look. other sentences. I'm sorry. You're gonna have to let no, me it's be okay. this, and I'm gonna love you to be that. I, I'm just happy to be here. Uh, but what do you mean you're not quick enough to what? Am I getting in the way? No, I don't think even if you were slowing down for me that I'd be. But what's quick? I'm just saying the words. Yeah, but you have this like ability to. Um, <laughs> to like uh like um like in a good way i don't know this say in a bad way suck the energy out of the room that's that's what makes podcasting very difficult that's why it's hard to sit in it because i do Each feel other that way. sentences it's funny it's that's, that's it's funny, funny when but that's you mine do it. no yeah. it's funny when you do it i just no. don't do it too much okay because i just needed to do it once sure i don't know if it was the right time that i chose but it was in the back of my head you guys, if you think the energy in here is is uh, anything negative, and, I, and you could say what the negative thing is, but or you could just say negative. If Do you, you think there's negative energy? No, but you said suck the energy out of the room. Oh, okay. But in like a good way. Is that a bad... I don't know if that's a bad way or a good way. Have you seen Spaceballs? Of course you have. No. Really? Yeah. Well, in the movie, you know what Spaceballs is? No. Nope. Really? Yeah. May the sh may the Schwartz be with you. You just made that up. It's a Mel Brooks movie where he's satirizing Star Wars, and Rick Moranis, who everyone says I look like, which is crazy because he looks like my Uncle Bob. Oh, your Uncle Bob is great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, and your mom is great. Could I tell you about Spaceballs or not? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rick Moranis plays uh, the Darth Vader character, mm -hmm. and uh, and. Uh, there's a scene where they suck all the, the oxygen out of the ship or whatever, or the planet. And that's what it's like. That, how is that a good thing? Yeah, well, that's like oxygen, which is necessary to live. I feel I, I'm not good with words. Um, but what I'm trying to say is you like you're very captivating and interesting. And um, are you going to fart? Did you fart? Was it quiet? I was hoping you didn't see it. So in post, what you see is captivating, interesting, and we cut to me farting. And then it's just like, wow, look how Rick recontextualizes the podcast by adding farts at just the right time. time. Right. Um, but yeah, I don't know where I was going with that at this point. I just don't want people, I want your audience to know that I'm a fan. So I think I'm just like overwhelmed and... What do you mean? Well, they know you're a fan. And also, but like confident guy jokes aside, that's awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, and that was very nice of you to say on your podcast. But what what are you talking about? Um, I'm just, I feel like it takes me a while to like get into it. I'm not, you're just on, I feel like, you know, that wasn't a, and we're back snap. I want to make that clear. It was just like, you're on. Every time you snapped, we put a different mustache on you. <laughs> I was surprised you didn't ask me to bring like wardrobe changes or anything. Snap. No, I'm saying like snap. I should have thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, in my head while that was happening, I was oh. contemplating getting up and getting something to give you to put on. And it's just, I, I feel nice. <laughs> I don't want to have to build. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then when it's editing, especially when I'm doing it, because, uh, you know, shout out to Perry and to, and to John Michael and everybody who helps. Uh, I have people who help now, but sometimes I'm sitting there and I'm, I'm like, I really had to, just because you thought of it, Rick, doesn't mean you have to say and do it. And now I'm stuck 15 minutes, 35 minutes doing all these little things. Could I chug this water? I prefer if you drank it regular. I'll tell you what, drink, you could chug it, but I'll put it in 70% slow motion so it looks like regular speed. Okay. Just because I feel like I need to do something like... Well, you, it seems like you want to vape? You want to go on the balcony and hit, take a hit of your vape? Oh, maybe I'll do a quick little vape. What does that do for you? I get so antsy without it. I'm very, I need to like meditate or something because I get really uncomfortable when I sit too long. Like if you notice my Physically legs, uncomfortable. Yeah. Do you like, want to do this podcast standing for a little bit? No, I hate standing. Huh. Yeah. So you're just either hating what you're doing or uncomfortable. Yeah. You yeah. remind me of my daughter. <laughs> what are you waiting for? Take your water. <laughs> I was trying to think if you actually had a daughter. I don't. Well, technically I do, but. Chug it, 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 chug it. Surprise! We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. 
Dad, you like a nice night's sleep, right? A what sleep? <laughs> did I not, did I, was that not clear? <laughs> no. A nice, a nice night's sleep. An NNS. <laughs> or an NKS if we're talking about the medieval days. I do enjoy a good night's sleep. How much is it? How important is it to you? Seven and a half on a scale of 10. What's less important? Eating. Wait a minute. Eating is less than a seven and a half out of 10? To me, it is, yes. Okay. What's more important? Money. Okay. Go online. You take a two minute sleep quiz, two minutes at tops. By the way, that sleep quiz is very informative. I like the way they handle that. What did you like about it? It gets you to know, it gets them to know the way I like to sleep hard, firm, soft, hot, cold, up, down. It's, it, they're just not throwing a mattress at you. They're customizing a mattress for your sleep habits. Are you like hard, firm or, or soft? You like a firm, don't I'm you? I'm a firmer, yeah. I'm a firmer too. I'm a firm believer in a firm mattress. As am I. It's a fabulous mattress. I'm only home for a little bit. You might see me unboxing one here because I'm thinking about ordering a mattress so I could have one here. I woke up this morning with a stiff back. I'm not blaming it on your mattress, but I don't think it would happen with the Helix. Not a chance. I am, I'm a sensitive boy, so I get, I, I'm a, I get stiff backs. Helix Mattress was awarded number one best overall mattress pick in 2020 by GQ and Wired Magazine. Now, I'll be honest. I don't read either of those magazines. Well, I'm a GQ reader. Do you read GQ? For years. What do you like about a GQ magazine? All the fashions. You get to see what's cool, what's good, what I'm going to wear this season. You are a fashionable man. Uh, Betty talks about it often that my dad has good fashion. She also thinks Larry David dresses very well. I don't think... I don't know about that. I don't know. I'm not saying he doesn't. I just right. don't look at him I and think. I think you measure the way people are dressed by their relationship to NBA coaches. Some NBA coaches dress like they buy all their clothes at a resale store, and some NBA coaches dress like they're GQ models. Well, it makes your analogy kind of moot because there's so many NBA coaches that dress different ways. They're not necessarily great dressers. Neither of them, any of them, are mute. And there's nothing would be nothing wrong with it if they were though. Well, you you're, you brought up the point. I said moot. None of none of them are moot either. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what is moot? <laughs> uh, your guess is as good as mine. Google search the meaning of moot. Moot means debatable. Yeah, I thought it meant the opposite. Yeah, I thought moot means it's inconsequential and really doesn't matter. Right. That must be something else. That Which must is, be not again, moot. Not the case with a Helix mattress because it matters where you sleep and what you sleep. I on. would argue that uh, getting a Helix mattress is not a moot point. Correct. Uh, uh, Thirty seconds ago, guess what I'm arguing? It is a moot point. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so, Rick, is there any kind of guarantee or warranty in the Helix mattress? Ten years. Seriously. Well, that's the warranty. The guarantee, 100 nights. If you don't love this mattress, and you could use it for over three months, not only will they, they, they sh let you ship it back, they'll come and pick it up from you at no cost. Helix is offering up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows by going to helixsleep.com slash Tyso. 100 night guarantee. It's not moot. It is moot. Whatever it is, I'm still, I, don't, I'm still, I think the moot thing, I'll tell you what the most moot point might be. What's moot? Yes. Right. Listen, look, if you're not looking for a mattress, you're not going to buy this mattress. But when you're in the mood for a mattress, you go to helixsleep.com slash Tyso to get up to $200 off all mattress orders and two free pillows. Can I get a last word in here? So listen, it's 100 nights. You won't need 100 nights. You'll need 10 minutes to know it's the best mattress you've ever slept on. But take advantage of the 100 nights. Invite your friends over. Take it over to your mom's house. See if she likes it. See if your pets like it. It's a 100-night guarantee. Take we got to wrap this up. All right. I'm really tired after all this. I'm going to bed. It's my fifth night of my 100-night guarantee. So I have 95. <laughs> this snap is back, please, to the today. podcast. And we're back. Where were we? I don't About know. About 10 years ago today. You start. 10 years ago today, I was um, probably trying to get my permit. Yes. Where was I? I know exactly where I was. Tell me. Ten, I know where I was 10 years ago tonight mm -hmm. to the day. Mm -hmm. I was at my place mm -hmm. and I was, I was wanting to watch. I just started watching Lost and it was on Netflix when they were sending DVDs and I was wanting to start the next disc, which was part of season two. And I was wanting it to come in the mail, but it didn't. And it was already late. Uh, and then it did. And the, I remember thinking the mail came so late today. And then I watched season two of Lost. Ten years exactly today. Wow. Yeah. That's huge. It's regular. Have you um, have you seen all of Lost? Uh, I don't want to give any spoilers. Okay. I've never seen it. Uh, bleep this out. Um, 
and then uh, uh, I guess you know what you could have bleeped that, but I will give a warning. Uh, spoiler alert! I'm gonna say it now, unbleeped. I have seen all of Lost. Did you feel the need to say if you were if this was your podcast and you were hosting, would you have felt the need to say something? Yeah. But as a guest, you don't. No, because I don't want to. I don't know. I feel like you have a way of doing things that I don't want to interrupt. No, I per, I'm, I think I'm a much better podcast guest than host. You think so? Yeah, because I don't have a responsibility to you. You being the person opposite me. Yeah. Do you feel like you have less of a responsibility because I'm uh, not as famous as your other guests? No, I have. I have. I'm grateful and have some awesome famous cool people i look up to guests but my i don't people say that to me like peers will say that to me like a joke like that but a lot i mean i have so many people on that are just my family or friends you know like i I think it's cool i think it's cool that people have this idea of my podcast of being that i really do and i think it's helped me get other cool people because that it's kind of been it's just people think of it that way Mm -hmm. um but that, but sometimes I feel like, like I, I people ask to come on my podcast uh, a lot. How do you feel when people ask to do your podcast? I feel just as fine as if they didn't ask. Yeah. But I don't know how they feel when I respond to them, which is, uh, you know, either yeah, that's a good idea. How about this time? Or I no. How do you say no? Just no. It depends on the reason. Um, I, I usually don't say no. It's usually uh. The, the truth is, and most of them blanket this, uh, especially now that I have advertisers, I need the this guest to either s- transparently su- and superficially, it's the game, bring in uh, a, a X amount of numbers or it be good enough to where I don't care. Yeah. Now, I'll never know. I could have somebody on and think it's going to be good and it's not and vice versa. But people who are I'm close to in my life and or who I think is so interesting and or funny, then it's like, yeah, fuck, come over. And then when I have low sponsors that week, we'll air it then. Um, but most people, most people aren't interesting yeah. or funny. Yeah. That's what makes podcasting so hard. I'm supposed to be interesting and funny every week. It's so hard. It is really hard. And I, but I feel like with you, you are interesting and funny every week. And that's why your podcast is so great. For me, I feel like it's a lot harder for me to turn it on, as I said earlier. And so it's like, I know I'm doing a podcast. And I'm like, okay, like be funny, get in the zone. And sometimes I just wake up and I'm like, I'm not in the zone. Almost ev- almost every podcast beforehand, I say out loud to Betty if she's here or, or to myself, I don't want to do this. Yes. Um, and then, but I also have said it enough. I say about stand-up. Uh, I, I don't want to do it. But when I'm doing it, I do enjoy it. Yeah. And I know it's, uh, I've used this analogy for something different a while ago, but I used to be terrified of throat cultures stick down the throat. Oh, really? You know what those are? Yeah. Terrified of them. And every time after I got one, I, I, cause I'm, I'm not crying, but the chemicals in my body are, or maybe I was crying, but you, like the, panicking, you know? And, and there's a sense of relief afterwards, uh, that is like, <laughs> you know, like, oh, that wasn't that bad. And like, you're laughing because, you know, I'm connecting with a doctor. Oh, you know, this and making jokes and being so, and then there was a moment where I realized before going in, wait a minute, I have been here so many times. And every time I say it's not that bad. So I'm still scared, but the parent inside of me was able to be like, Rick, I know, but it's fine. Trust us. Yeah. And then then I'm not scared anymore. So there's something like that with podcasting where it's like, I don't want to do this. I'm not going to be funny. I don't want to be funny. I don't know what to say to this person. I I don't know if if I care that much and I don't want to lie, but I can't say I don't care. So I have to find some bit to overcompensate, all these things. But, But then when you do it, it's like, people say, uh, are you ever scared? Like doing, oh, how do you do an hour or whatever? Uh, I, I will never not have something to say, right? Like with performing? In any in any situation ever, I can't imagine, and I'm not just speaking for myself, for anybody, I can't imagine anybody, unless they have some debilitating communication, social anxiety thing that is like at a clinical level of really some issues that I don't understand, to be somewhere and be like, 
you know, like, when do you not have something to say? Yeah. Do you disagree? No, I think that's valid. Yeah, because anytime I'm having a conversation, like, in regular life, when you're when you're meeting someone new and you're, like, trying to come up with things to talk about, maybe the conversation isn't incredible, but there's always something that you can talk about. That is my weak spot. But I don't think that's what podcasting is. Meeting somebody and having to say, so your sisters or your... I'm sorry, you're the oldest? Like that shit? Ugh. Yeah, you don't like small talk. I can't do it. Yeah. I can't do it. Um, we can, Let's talk about that. But but, but tell me about you for podcasting when you have to be on, you're not going to be funny. What go, what are you thinking? And then how does that, how does that come to, to be? I still don't know. Like how long have you been doing your podcast? I'm guessing this is... Somewhere in the high 110 episodes. Okay. I don't know, 117-ish. Sometimes I do like solo episodes, which is also hard because like during COVID, I wasn't really doing much. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, I don't know what to talk about, even if it's just like with myself. But it's. do you find that it's easier when you have like family on? Uh, I don't understand what easier means. Like easier in turn, like I had my dad on my podcast and... It was really easy because I have such a long history with him. So How it was long have like, you known him? I've known him for about 25 years, but really like Today? 20 years. Um, oh, because yeah. when you were p- between 15 and 20, you guys didn't get along? No, I've always gotten I, along. It was a toddler yeah. joke. I understand. I was just trying to but finish w- your sentence. Okay. What? I feel like I'm bombing. You know, I, I, I'm not glad you feel that way. And there's no but about that. I will say... That when somebody feels that way, when I don't feel that way, it makes me realize how different realities can be. I know that. I know realities could be different. Yeah. And I try to tell myself that when I'm feeling this isn't good, this isn't special, this has been done before. Any of these things that feel like it's not worth me trying this art to people. And it might be true, but also like people are laughing. Maybe they're not lying. So when somebody else, like I'm, I'm having such a good, good time. Yeah. This just feels, this feels, I'll tell you what it feels. This feels easy. Mm. This just feels like, yeah, you know, we're just this. And for you to feel like you're bombing, it's like, maybe when I feel like I'm bombing, the other person is thinking, this feels easy. Yeah. You know? When you started stand up, like when you were doing open mics, were you... I, I guess this is my question from earlier doing kind of like the same style no i, I was always uh, the uh, yeah, uh oh also let me say honestly uh you're not bombing i okay. really am having a nice time with you okay and the the, the the constant i guess would be i was always experimenting but the experiments have, are very very different yeah some of the stuff was experimenting uh uh, with literally the audience, uh, then it kind of evolved into exper- uh, experimenting with the energy of the audience. Then it came to experimenting with um, uh, the expectations of the audience. And then I realized, oh, I am just playing with the environment in some way because I don't know how to do jokes. So then I went from years of like doing jokes and storytelling and I just didn't want to do stand up anymore. So I like to think now I have definitely not the best of both worlds, but some of both worlds and I'm still figuring it out. Yeah. Did you did you feel confident when you first started? Yeah, I always I, I uh yes. Yeah, but not that I was good. I always felt and I still feel, and it's scary because I haven't figured it out and um, I ain't getting any younger, but I always felt and feel that there's something I have that I could see that is unique to me um, for better or worse. I'm trying to get it to be for better, but even if for worse, there's this thing that I am curating and building and trying to get to be something that people want to you know, see. Uh, and it's just very hard. Like, I've done it. I have had shows where it's like, where it's not an accident to where it's, this is why I'm doing this. This thing, this is special. Yeah. But I, 
I guess where I'm getting better is I'm able to do it more consistently. But I kind of like you, where I'm not, I'm not this, I'm not that. Uh, before podcasting, when you're talking about energy, funny, whatever, I, I can't, I, I can't harness it yet. I say yet in hopes of uh, at someday maybe being able to do it. Yeah. Um. But stand up is it's only to me it's only worth it if I am in the audience with the audience, and in order does that make sense? Like when you're on stage mentally kind of being an audience member, like watching yourself. I, th- I just thought of something, a great way to explain it to us. Um, I, I, f- I always felt that whatever I'm thinking, the, the person and people opposite me are thinking. And I didn't, that wasn't uh, um, uh, what I'm thinking is right. It was truly not having the awareness that there are other perspectives out there that differ much from me. I have known, and I've talked on this podcast, that what attracts... T- why I love comedy so much is it's a language where I know what the other person is thinking. Um, even if you don't like me, if I could get you to laugh, there's a moment of, of a connection there, right? And you, I know, I, I never read facial cues well, I'll always know a real laugh. Yeah. Um, so you know, you know when that person, so there's something about uh, when I am in the audience with you, the audience, where I'm connected to you and does that make sense? I, yeah. I don't mean it to sound as corny as it does, but like, if we're not doing this together, then why are we doing this together? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And it limits my ability to perfect a specific set because I have to have moments where I'm watching too. Otherwise, I'm compl- I'm not even there with them. Does that make sense? One hundred percent. So, the benefit of experimenting is you get to f- find stuff, and I'm always needing. It's like my but my my performance metabolism is very fast and I have to keep going through stuff uh, and the craft has been where I haven't gotten there yet is figuring out that equilibrium did I answer was that yeah totally maybe a little self-indulgent I meant I it I so. like telling you so never mind it was good I I get what you mean because like if I have a bad set it's purely well not purely there's probably other reasons too but I notice like if I don't feel good about a set it's because I feel super disconnected from the audience I feel like there's something in between me and them yeah. and so you explaining that you're like one with the audience um you know I, I want to say something that's real uh what's the word um Joel McHale was on uh, by the time this comes out a few weeks ago and he said whatever the word is like that's what I'm thinking because he compared something to jazz Mm -hmm. like what what am I thinking of I want to say this Um, we'll just cut to what what Joel said it was pretentious yes that's the word Mm. and uh, that is more than being connected this is so pretentious but it's so uh, I mean this more connected with the audience I need to be I think a performer we need to be connected with with the bit right with what the thing is like you have to be honest and I don't mean you can't make stuff up but you have to believe the reason you're making it up you have to want to tell this thing and the only way you could want to tell something is if you're connected with it right I mean I'm a little high now but bear with me if you're telling a joke and you don't love it how is it funny Yeah, and I think that's why comedy can be hard is because if we're performing regularly and every night and if you're, you know, doing a joke two nights in a row, then it all of a sudden feels not real anymore. It doesn't feel as honest because you've said it before. You're not surprised by your own material. So it can become like... um, it, It can become fake because you're explaining... The joke which is a feeling and a response that's why i think you have to find ways of like like i think that for at least the way i see stand up a perfect set a a set that's worth sharing i should say um well i mean maybe that's obvious you can't just keep going up but this thing isn't about good bad good bad it's getting the laugh and then and then resetting connecting with the audience connecting with a joke building something up and that could mean and here's what i've been finding to make it easier that could mean either explain like yes musicians will say uh you know this next uh i got in a bad breakup and i would drive by my girlfriend's house seven days a week 
And then people are laughing because like, oh, we get it. And he's not trying to be funny. So we're laughing like those explanations of why you're telling this joke. That's where it's been helping. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh, no. Am hmm. I too high? I don't think so. Take that I can't out. Tell. Don't take it out. But if I say it again, take it out because Rory Scovel said something to me once. Um, get out of my way, dude. And I've never forgotten it. No, I'm just kidding. He said, never let the audience know you're high. And uh, I love that. Wait, why? I don't think it's a hard rule that you can't let them know. What I took from it, what he went, was never use it as an excuse. You mm. know what I mean? Oh, sorry, I'm a little high. Or oh, that doesn't make sense, I'm high. And uh, I don't ever because on stage you're performing. But here it's a little different. And with I, I, I often feel like saying I'm sorry to the guest or to the audience for doing too much. So anyway. Who are your favorite comics? There's only one. Who? Brent Morin. Yeah. Unbelievable. He got me into the comedy store for the first time. Yeah? Yeah, because him... Could he get me in there? <laughs> Shout out to the Lion's Den podcast. We'll put up the thumbnail here. Him and my sister work together at Conan. And Do I know your sister? I don't think so. Okay. Um, and she asked him if he could like put me on a list to get in at the comedy store and watch because I was like 17 and I really wanted to see shows and he let me in and it was the coolest thing ever. That was very cool. Yeah, it was. Um, but he's not really my favorite comedian. It's kind of mean. He's my, f he's maybe my favorite person that's a comedian. Yeah. Uh, but you know, Seinfeld, Brian Regan. Chappelle, Kevin Hart, just like the big obvious ones, I think. You're a big Kevin Hart guy? Not anymore, but it's not because I don't like him anymore. But Kevin Hart was, uh, he had, I don't remember what the names even were, but he had two specials that I couldn't believe it when I saw it. So it's it's like once you've done, it's like what Adam Sandler, although Adam Sandler is fantastic, um, but I feel like after Waterboy, he did enough to where he doesn't matter what he, he he's in. It's it's he'll make everything and whatever he wants. He like did enough. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, that's what Kevin Hart is. Uh, I don't I haven't seen his last few specials or maybe I, I have and I don't remember. But whenever I see him, he does like stuff with uh, that workout thing. Do you know that YouTube series he has yeah. on the LOL network? Uh, he did one with Conan. Whenever I watch him, it's just he's just he's got it. Yeah, he's unbelievable. Uh, I don't, he has not inspired me as a comedian at all. Um, but I mean, Chappelle has got to be, Chappelle and Seinfeld. What about you? Um, first, Dane Cook. He was, a, he was a one for me too. Yeah. Yeah. Like when I was in fifth grade listening to his albums, I was like, this is the funniest Pardon thing Pardon me for not naming that. That He was the only CD, I think. No, Brian Regan too. But yeah, I listened to, um, to him a lot. Yeah. And then when I was in high school, it was like Dalia, Dom Herrera, um, uh, who, else? oh, um, um, what's his name? Dove Davidoff. Yeah. Um, I also left off Dalia, but I, it wasn't the same thing for, with him, like the other comedians. Yeah. Um, because like, I didn't listen to his, like I did, if I was at a, at some place he was performing, um, but yeah, Chris, I, the first time I ever saw him was at the Haha ha Cafe. I remember it, this very well because I wasn't out here very long, so it's not like I knew people, but that was the first. Did you start out here? I started in Cleveland, but I was like doing improv more. I would do, you know, a show every month, if that. Yeah. But I saw him and that was, that was, uh, I, I'm sure I was like this some other time with somebody, but I, maybe I, I wasn't, where I saw him and I couldn't believe what he did. And... Uh, I saw him for the second time. I saw it again, and I couldn't believe this. And then he was outside um, on the, you know, just the chairs and table. And it was a time where, like, I don't want to go say something to him because I don't want to be, you know, that thing that pe I've heard people say before. Yeah. But also, I, 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 I know, um, you know, I mean it. I know what I'm, I mean it. And I just went, hey, man, I just, I want to let you know I thought well, you were amazing. And he goes, thanks, man. I go, okay. And then I walked away. I'm like, you didn't linger. <laughs> you know, but yeah. there was that. What, uh... Uh, when you were out here doing stand-up, it always, like, blows my mind picturing uh, comics who I just know as good comics, like, doing open mics. 
So when you were starting out here, do you have friends who you kind of like started with that you're still friends with now? Because a lot of people like stop doing it. A lot of people move, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's like, do you still have your crew? I don't have a crew and maybe I'm wrong and maybe they'll be insulted. But I say that because other than this, other than podcasting, I don't see people. I don't do things. Hmm. Um, You're friends with John, aren't you guys pretty tight? Yeah. John, I see. Brent, I see. David Sullivan, I see. Uh, I don't, but not much. And only because they live within walking distance, I think I would make time, but I'm like, I don't anyway, but I'm still friends with these people. I'd love to see them. The point I meant was during that time is where you would see them every night. You know, there's 35 people that you like and you guarantee to see between four and nine of them any night. I know I miss it so much. I was like in a real funk. I think I'm still in the middle of a funk. I do want to name a couple names. I may be leaving some off. Okay. Uh, Amir K. Yeah. Santino. Yeah. Um, Brent, obviously. Um, Andy Kozel. Do you know him? Yeah. Uh, Benji Aflalo. Yeah. Uh, I, I know there's more, but like those are the ones that Esther? I would. Esther. Um, but I don't see. Like those are the ones I think I saw all the time. Like for some reason, even though you're at a different open mic all the time. Those were the ones I was always with. Also, probably because we put each other on the lists for one another, you know? Yeah. Uh, man, I do miss that. I know. Also, I would get up a lot. You know, I would get up five nights a week. And I'm coming back now. I, 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 I have my first show in a couple of days. Where are you going? Uh, jam in the van. Fun. Is it? Yeah. Which show? Like, do you know whose show it is? Michael Inochi. Oh, okay. That's how it works? Everybody has their own show there? Well, so they have like different nights. So one night it'll be like Trevor Wallace and Friends or like whoever. Or it'll be a just outside produced show with a showcase style. I'm, I'm nervous about it. I'm ner- Why? Because uh, I'm picturing it from the pictures of it being like outside. Uh, uh, and I've done outside shows that are calm before. But like I, I don't thrive in a situation where i have to say look at me i'll do it no everyone's like like the audience is very attentive and i could and i could be i could speak slow in certain moments and i just feel like i'm gonna have to be like i'm picturing like a bar show type of vibe no because it's like enclosed so if you go up earlier in the show it'll definitely be better for you if you go up later like people might be a little bit high and drunk and then that'll be maybe more difficult to like get their attention wholeheartedly i'm also worried because uh i'm not vaccinated yet i have only my first shot so part of me wants to go up on stage but the other part of me and i'd have to wear gloves and i don't want to have to have gloves and or bring a wipe to clean it and and that looks like one of my opening jokes and i have to write something around it but i'm also uncomfortable touching the mic they switch out the mics between each comic and they sanitize each really mic. yeah and who puts it back in um, the person whose job it is to sanitize the mics. I That's think th- great. I think they do like a decent job. I would say the green room hang. You might want to. No, no, no. Not as much as I miss that. I'm yeah. not interested. Yeah. Come on my podcast and we'll talk. Until then, I'll listen to some. I just can't wait to be king. Yeah. Uh, you are touring, aren't you? Mm-hmm. How did that happen? Um, I started, well, I just had started headlining right before COVID. And so then I was like in Denver doing, how did that happen? Five years in, I don't know. I wasn't expecting anything to happen for like 10 years. Cause I don't know if you've heard that too. Like everyone always says like, don't expect anything for 10 years. So I wasn't expecting anything for 10 years and I'm over, I'm 12, I'm I'm going to be 14 years in. I still don't know what I'm doing. But yeah. go on. I mean, I have no idea what I'm doing either, but I think just, I don't know. I, I, I started in LA because I'm from Long Beach. And so shout out to Long Beach. We'll put their Instagram handle up here at Long Beach LBC. And when I started, I was going to the comedy store a lot. And I think like I was just exposed to people who wanted to help me. And then 
through that i got to do like who helped you i know that you've been on rogan a couple times which is awesome yeah well i started doing like kill tony tony's podcast like a year into stand up and that was just like by me signing up and then him asking me to be a regular on that and so because i did his podcast i would get to do a brand new minute of material each week in front of like different guests who came on the podcast and like but how's that that helpful you could do three minutes in front of a different audience every week anywhere totally and i was doing that too but like when when do you ever get to do comedy in front of a comic you look up to a year into doing stand-up but how does you looking up to him help you well no like like so i was doing stand-up every week on this podcast and like one of the guests was rogan one of the guests was russell peters who took me to open for him in ontario and i was way too early to be opening for anyone you know but like do you um, go on the road with other people do you on the road with, with tony or with rogan um, Tony would take me on the road to feature and Santino would take me on the road to feature and then Rogan will sometimes take me on the road to like open the shows and then he still has a feature. Um, so yeah, I, I guess through all of that is how. Yeah, that's great. And when you're featuring, you're doing 25, 30 yeah. minutes? Yeah. Which one? Um, depends on the headliner. Do you think you're good at stand up? I mean, obviously, I, like, know that I have to grow a lot, and there's, like, a lot that um, I'm still learning and, like, trying to be better at, but I think generally I'm pretty good. What, what, um, what are you good at? Like, what, how, what do you, what makes, what's your, uh, what do they, what do they call it? Uh, in, in, there's a business term, like, unique selling point, USP, I think that's what it's called. Mm-hmm. What's your, do you have one? Yeah, I think so. I think like, I mean, obviously this is going to pass, but I think being young and telling jokes about uh, myself and my experiences as like a younger lady um, and uh, I don't know, I feel like I have an outlook on life that because I do talk like this and I'm low energy, I feel like my kind of comedy is I talk about things that I should be upset by or like, I feel like especially young people can be um, very opinionated. And I think my perspective is that I I should be upset with certain things and my take is normally that uh, the opposite. Well, we're gonna, we're gonna hear one of these jokes right when we get back, I'm excited. So make the right choice and visit Marshall Carpet One and Rug Gallery. And we promise, with more than 50 years as a family-owned business, we've got you covered. So my entire family got murdered and the killer came into my bedroom and said, I can murder you or I can put it in your butthole and... I chose the butthole, of course. I don't want to get murdered today. My family's already gone. Now, there's a big part of me that thinks that we'll, we were going to cut right back to where you saw us, but we're actually going to keep this in to show how meta the podcast could be, and... That is interesting. Yeah. I don't know. I, 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 I don't know what necessarily... Maybe I have the wrong idea of what my unique selling point is. How come you didn't quote the unique part and only on the selling point? Um, For those of you who are just listening, Allie. Allie? Allie. Allie put up quotations during selling point, but not... I forgot about the quotations until after I already started talking. Do you forget about quotations a lot? Yeah, it's so hard to remember grammar. Who said that? I think uh, Eisenhower. How come you could remember people who were qu- who quoted something, but you can't remember the quotation? I um, got hit with a softball when i was 25 is that what you heard when when uh i said i got hit um when i was 25 that Mm -hmm. i was hit by a softball just because i was playing softball yeah because it it was a teammate and i ran into each other you could even see the the scar on one of these eyes zoom in do you see it oh uh, right here yeah Yeah, right here i'm running into i was playing short and i ran into my second baseman are you still friends not after that unrelated we just it was before i moved out here yeah yeah now what i don't know are you um i think i know what you're gonna ask hmm. i'll tell you if i had it right okay ask me 
Are you circumcised? I thought that's what you were gonna say. Uh, I don't like to. I don't like to reveal that. I'm pretty gross. Uh, but at least you're pretty. We'll be right back after we're done and we move on to another episode. Yeah. Do you think that you're pretty? And if so, do you think? Do you ever go? I'm pretty for a. Uh, I'm pretty for a. Uh, comedian or i'm pretty for somebody my age or i guess that wouldn't count for you because you're still in the pretty age range the yeah. par but how do you think of yourself as far as looks and do you do you i guess it depends on the answer i was gonna ask if how you consider it but what do you think on the looks um i was just thinking about this this morning when i was getting ready i think i'm uh i'm sometimes good looking what are you the other times um, just average, regular. So you range between average and above average. Yeah. You ever feel ugly? Yeah. What's the difference between ugly and average? Ugly is one like I haven't gotten enough sleep. My skin looks like, like I look like half dead. Um, so I, my eyes are really sensitive. So like my eye was kind of red this morning and just when things are not going well, my hair is all gross. Do you go up on stage ugly um, when you feel ugly? No, if I'm feeling ugly... I don't care if I look ugly, but feel good because it is a choice. It's what if kind you of look a, well, but feel bad? Then I'll put like makeup on and try and make myself feel cuter. When you go on stage, you ever talk about feeling pretty or feeling ugly? Um, I have before, but I don't really do it anymore. I don't think. Brent told me this once because he and I have a similar thing um, about like features of ours that we don't like or ugly or most most specifically like this this acceptance that we both had a while ago at this point but we'll never be hot guys but sometimes like i just i feel so ugly right now and i don't mean just right now i mean like all year um i just i'm the ugliest i've ever been and when you go on stage and you're at least like a regular looking person which no offense is disgusting Mm -hmm. it's disgusting just be hot or you know right but then it's you can't say that you can't talk about you it's hard to be self-deprecating when you're average i'm average and when you're self-deprecating you're telling the average audience that average is bad mm. and then they either don't connect or don't like it does that make sense do you yeah. have thoughts on it yeah i used to have really 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 bad acne yeah. and so i know and so i would talk about that in a self-deprecating way, but I felt like that was uh, more, not acceptable, but like it was clear that my skin was very bad. But do audiences, what do they, do you? It was great. I mean, it was funny. Like That's the benefit of being ugly. Yeah. You could talk about it. And sometimes I feel like if I'm wearing too much makeup or like sometimes occasionally look like really good in my own opinion, I feel like it makes me over like I, I feel like I don't do as well oh you feel like maybe you're not an underdog no I just feel like it's it's distracting to me because it's a, it's a mindset you feel and I mean no disrespect you feel that you're you sometimes you're so pretty that you're distracted no it's like it's this like hot girl mindset where I'm like HGMS yeah where you're what is it it's all like when like when a girl gets all dressed up to go to the club or something. She has hot girl. Yeah, she has hot girl mindset and fun shoulders. And so she's going to the club and she's like, I'm getting drinks. I don't I'm not thinking about my work. Is this how you are? Or is this hot girl mindset? This pump? is hot girl mindset. You don't do this with a thumb up in the if you're not feeling hot. Yes. So you're correct. tapping in. I'm tapping in right now. I'm right. Okay, so, you, so your shoulders are fun. Your palms are, uh, you know, listening to some good music. Yeah, and you're just like waiting to get free drinks. Now, how is that distracting? So then if I'm like, I, to be in the mindset for me to do stand up, like I want to be um, thinking about my jokes. I want to be like in the moment, but I'm just like, damn, I really killed it tonight with the makeup. Wow. Yeah. I can't connect to that. I yeah. th uh, th you you put on makeup so good that you're like, I can't think of my jokes. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm Do you being... have something that you got out of your eye that I need to, we need to like put no. on something? I was just itching and then looking. I have these long nails. Yeah. So I can see like the growth of my natural nail underneath. So sometimes I just look at it. If only we could do that with our craft. In fact, I would say that a lot of times our comedy is a veneer that we put over our nails where we have to look 
and be conscious of where it's going instead of relying on the thing that we're showing people we think we are. And do I think you, I'll go. Oh, go ahead. Do you feel like you present a different version of yourself on stage, or do you feel like everything you do is totally true to that, yourself? Yeah. You think everything is. Yeah. Yeah. I only bomb when it's not. Mm. Even if people don't know I'm bombing. Yeah. Sometimes. Go ahead. What do you think that you're like when you're not being yourself? What kind of personality or like thing do you typically do where you're like, oh, this isn't me? Uh, it's not even that I'm not myself. It's that when I'm not present, I have to then where am I? And where I am is deconstructing and calculating and thinking. So I end up doing that. Yeah. Um, and that's not funny. And I'm lucky that the podcast um, media, uh, the, the, like the actual, the art form, not the art form, the, the media, the medium of what podcasting is, that is allowed there. So what's fun about podcasting is you could do bits and they work or they don't work. And then you could also be present and talk about whatever the fuck. And it's like, it's fine. It's a fucking podcast. Yeah. Stand up isn't a podcast, obviously, but specifically Stand up podcasting. All you have to be is interesting. Mm. Stand up. You have to be interesting and you have to be funny in that order, I think. So when I don't feel funny, I don't have to be on a podcast. But if you're not funny on stage, then what are you doing? Yeah. So where I'm my worst or I think where it gets in the way the most is when I'm on stage and I'm doing what I'm doing with you right now. I'm just like talking about the thing instead of doing it. Does that make yeah. sense? Yeah. Yeah. How's this going? Pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. Do you feel comfortable? I don't know. What would make you less comfortable? Less comfortable? Yes. Outside of the like inappropriate things of like that would never happen. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But like either something that I was missing, not aware of, or you were, or a situation that's realistic. What could make this less comfortable? That's believable. If there were like, um, if there were those like, you know, those beads that old people have on the back of their passenger or their driver's seat mm -hmm. in their car. Yeah. Those. Okay. What can make it more comfortable? Um, I'm going to go ahead and on a limb and, and say that you don't know. I don't know. Can I tell you, tell you something? Hmm. That is, um, is a, it's a, it's a great tool of finding out what could make you more comfortable because it's easy to make yourself comfortable if you if you have the rules in front of you you know if it's something as simple as i need a backrest or if it's something as specific to experience of i i don't like it when my guests uh don't use a coaster or blah 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 blah. having those things on call then you could like make yourself the most comfortable yeah i know what can make me more comfortable what less yawns from you oh uh, have i yawned <laughs> you were mid yawn when i brought it up no i wasn't we'll cut into a clip I know what can make me more comfortable. Maybe it was like a sneeze. It was a yawn. I don't know. Maybe I did. Also, I think you're very... Um, Please be nice. Ugly and stupid. What were you going to say? No, I think you're very like specific about how you like things. And so I'm, I just am nervous. That's a, yeah. That I'm like doing something wrong. The only thing that I want, the only thing that I I, ha, I want from a podcast that's consistent, uh, that I, I think I need to get better at, I think, is making sure that the guest could be whoever they really are. You know. Yeah. And if you're somebody who is uncomfortable, then please, you know be uncomfortable mm -hmm. but like what could i do that's what's so hard about hosting a podcast versus being a guest is i'm responsible for the product and for you it's like hosting a stand-up show where you have to you're responsible for the show and not for yourself yeah and that is so hard because i there are so many things you have to like filter out and make sure you prioritize over the the, the craft and the jokes and the bits does stand-up make you happy or do you feel like um you find happiness from other things. I don't, are those mutually exclusive? I don't get it. Like if you if you 
were never to do comedy again. Say comedy was comedy or stand up. Stand up. Because comedy exists in many ways outside of stand up. Stand up. Like, does stand up affect your self esteem in any way? I don't think so. However, I've done two shows in a year and a half, and I have been quite depressed. But I don't put that on the stand up. Mm. But maybe. But my validation of my of me being a funny person. I, I don't think is through stand up. Yeah. Because I feel like you're not someone who needs instant gratification. Like when Maybe. you post something on Instagram, are you constantly checking or like... Depends. Yeah. Sometimes. But uh, that's like that, you know, that dopamine addiction of looking. It's more less than likes. It's usually comments. So like if there's something funny, uh, I could interact. Like I comment back a lot. Yeah. Um, that's an addiction thing a bit. Yeah, I guess. But, you know, I'll put my ugly stuff online. Do you have certain vices? I don't know. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I feel like, I feel like my obsessive compulsive disorder is one, but that's not really the, like a guilty pleasure vice. Yeah. It's just like, I'm kind of trapped. Intrusive. Yeah. But I don't, I don't know. Like what? Like what are yours? Vaping? Vaping, phone, um, food. Food. Yeah. Um, uh, oh yeah. You're a big food guy. BFG. Yeah. Tons. Um, and you're very you, very uh, specific about what you do and don't like. Shout out to Jumods, food. my Instagram account. where So I, good. I don't you post on it anymore. Um, not much. But yeah, very specific. I know. I, I, yeah, I, I love to eat. Mm. I love to eat and I'm fortunate enough to have a metabolism that allows me to do it. You're fairly active though. Not in the past couple of years. I yeah. used to be very active. Basketball, Basketball softball. and lifting weights. You didn't know? I can't picture you like at the gym. I'll, put up, a couple, I'll put up a couple of pictures okay. here. And then if you, when you see this, um, I want you to then uh, leave a comment and tell me like, oh my God. You know, not those words, your own words. But like, I was never, you know, uh, as big as Vin Diesel. You know who Vin Diesel is. Of course. How do you know Vin? Um, from He did like a, he did a movie where he played either a father or a babysitter. And I just remember yeah, there was being a babysitter. A... I remember that one. Really? I, f I first uh, uh, absolutely fell in love with Vin Diesel um, from Triple X. The action movie where he's in Russia and he's like, we're family snowboards gets so many girls dude do you know you heard about vin and how many girls he got wait can i go pee really quick i prefer if you wait until we're done okay so do you know how many girls vin got how many i'm just joking you can go pee can i yeah we'll be right back i'll go pee too a couple things just happened for me i went upstairs to pee and uh i farted a little a little to where it reminded me, oh, I have been having to poop this whole time. I'm not going to poop now. I have company. But after peeing, I realized I think I shit myself. So I sat down and I wiped. Yeah. And, I, and I, I don't call it a shit yourself if it doesn't hit the underwear. That's my so, guilty pleasure. But there was something when you wiped. I had, I, I did. Yeah, I had used the bidet. Oh, you have a bidet? Yeah. I'm wow. doing a pretty big podcast. I don't wipe my own ass. That's nice. But I do wipe my own ass. It's just I have a little help. How long would it have taken you if you did have to go poop? I just I I, I sit there for a long time. Yeah, me too. If, if I had a vice, it's it's not pooping enough. I haven't had a poop that I've been excited about since. I last had. But Sarah Silverman has one of my favorite Jew jokes. And are jukes. you allowed to say that? What? Accidentally say Jew? Yeah. When you're talking about a Jewish yeah. comedian? You could do that? Yeah. Okay. Um, she has one of my favorite jokes about pooping where it's like nothing. I, I don't know exactly what it is, so it's not going to be as funny, but it's something like there's nothing quite as sexual as the feeling of like a really good poop. Do you know what I mean? Like uh, when you're when yeah. there's a good one and like well because it's vulnerable. It's your asshole opening, <sighs> literally opening. Not only is it opening in a way that like it or not, you like it. It's also you're getting poison out of your body. Mm. 
it's like it's a it's a two for, two for one swing yeah sometimes you ever pee so hard that you pee and it feels like a, a mild cum no maybe it's you uh, i guess girls don't orgasm through the urethra Mm-mm. um but uh pee and cum are cousins for many reasons but the big one is um they come over the same way you know i could be close to this person and i see him you know every weekend and this one lives out of town and i only see them when they come over for holidays but they're still coming the same way how are you well but uh, 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 uh an orgasm by design is a release where p is more of an export we're getting rid of the p we're having a come this we're draining out this is a privilege mm. but when you have to pee so bad it's like an itch you ever have an itch that you can't scratch and you scratch it it's, it's similar it's it's a release it's a, it's 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 Oh, feels so good. So when you have to pee so much and n- not only are you, oh, but it's also it's also coming out the same way a cum does. So then you go like, yeah, and it reminds you of how wonderful an orgasm could be. Hi, I'm Rick Glassman with another episode of Take Your Shoes Off. And in this episode, we talk about pisses, cums, shits and stand up. Special guest, Ali Mikovsky. 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 Scoot to Bobbity Blue. Now, I don't think I'll make that the cold open, but if there's something I want you to know about me, I love having options. Mm-hmm. You throw balls in the air, right? And trust yourself that you know how to juggle. And guess what? If there's enough things, people aren't going to notice. Have you seen that, by the way, that take your shoes off sign right there? Yeah, it's really good. If you throw a ball away. Will you, that come again? I'm sorry, come again. What were you saying? <laughs> Allie, the difference between podcasting and having a conversation is? Um, with the converse. Um, you, are you a good singer? You are a good singer. Let's, let's Let's do something. In. Are you better at harmonizing or, or taking lead? I can harmonize. I didn't ask if you can harmonize. I put I put up a post and I said, hey, I'm looking for somebody to help me do some sound mixing. I'm looking for people who really know what they're doing. I, and thank you, by the way, for reaching out. I got a lot of messages, but they were, I'm not really like that great at it, but I'm able to blah, blah, blah. Then I ain't interested, guy. Yeah. I'm not going to harmonize with someone who can harmonize. I'm going to harmonize with somebody who harmonizes. Two, three, four. I'm so mad at myself that I couldn't think of it because I knew what it is and I still do. Two, three, four. I'm gonna be a mighty king, so mighty enemies beware. beware. I don't know the words to the song. I only know the chorus. Well, I've never seen a king or beast with quite so little hair. I'm I'm gonna, m- it's gonna be the main event like no king was before. I'm looking up, I'm working down, I'm working on my roar. roar. Right? It's mm-hmm. far rather an inspiring thing. Oh, I just oh, can't what? wait to be king. Mm-hmm. Does it sound like I'm making fun of a deaf person? It's a little bit. Um, but I wasn't. But tone then it, it, deaf. It, it. Well, it's not tone deaf. It, it was a little it's, it's, bit. Uh, it's, it's, I have perfect, relatively perfect pitch. But that example was a little bit. The tone of deaf or tone deaf? Because that was proper tone. I mean, was it, it? We'll have to do a replay. That was a little flat, but we were fine. I'm not a singer, but I know. Yeah. I'm a decent singer. I'm going to be a mighty king, so enemies beware. Well, I've never seen a king or beast with quite so little air. It's going to be the main event. I'll do it without you. Okay. Like no king was before. I'm brushing up. I'm looking down. I'm working on my roar. Well, that's far from another uninspiring thing. But now you could come up with me. Oh, I just can't wait to be king. I love that. That was great. Thank you. You want to have a runoff? Sure. I win. Yeah. Uh, I won. You're like a big kid. Yeah, well, you're like a little bitch. 
Edit that in so you could see how inappropriate it is to call a woman a bitch. You know why I think it's inappropriate? Why? Because the world says you're not allowed to say it. But you know what the real truth is? Women be bitches. Shopping. Maybe bleep out the bitch. Bleep out one of them. Do you um do you consider you yourself Go ahead. Circumcised? Yeah. It's again, I don't talk about that. Do you consider yourself woke? Or do you think you're Oh wow, that's a great question. Hold on one second. What do you think about cancel culture? Oh peed myself, animated. It was all fake. Do I consider myself woke? You know what? The truth is, I consider myself so often that I try not to add to the list. Mm. I consider myself to uh, be aware that how many things I am unaware of. Uh, I'm willing and interested to hear perspectives. I'm also willing and able to make my decisions from them. Uh, I'm also, as we were talking about earlier in this podcast, very aware that multiple realities exist at once. And if something doesn't bother me, it doesn't mean it doesn't bother you. And I should respect that even if I like having beads on my couch, if they make your back uncomfortable while you're here, I get rid of them. Mm. Are you spiritual? Very. Are you? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Now, how would you define spiritual? Well, like, do you have any sort of like, a, do you feel connected to a higher conscious? Like, yeah, I guess. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I think of energy as a very tangible thing. Um, you could call it a spirit, uh, a life force between people, uh, animals, nature, where if you could tap into connecting to whatever it is you're connecting to, then you are happier and better and uh, have purpose. And the emulsifying agent between us, trees, whatever it might be, is an energy, you know, a frequency. Comedy is a big one. So, yeah, I think it's important, but I don't know if like, if, if when I said, do you want to have a runoff? And I ran off screen instead of doing what would have been more fun, which is singing. If that was the right decision. Mm. Are you think people are still listening? I don't know. Because this is going on, but I really am like having a nice time. Are and, you? Uh, yeah, I feel great. What, what was your first uh, impression of me? Or what do you, um, from your perspective... Uh, what was your, did you have any? Let's put that back in. We're going to play that again and we're going to put up the question with a ball and some music. Uh, and we're going to see, leave a comment below what you think the most efficient way to ask that of question could have been. Here we go. What, what was your first uh, impression of me? Or what do you, um, from your perspective, uh, what was your, did you have any? Now, after having seen that, how would you try and ask me that in a way that like, because I don't remember all the, uh, what I took from that was probably just like, what'd you think about me when you first met me? Is that what it was? Mm -hmm. That's all you were asking? Kind of, yeah. Why did it take, unless I'm missing something, there was a lot going on. Yeah, I'm bad with words and um Do you think maybe sentences. you're in the wrong profession? No. How are you able to do it if you're so bad with words and forming sentences? Because when I'm like in situations like this, um, sometimes it takes me a while to figure out what I'm trying to say. But if you were on stage, you'd be better? Yes. Pretend you're on stage and ask me. I'm in the audience. You're doing stand-up. And do an opener before you get into that question. Hey, guys. How are we feeling tonight? Well, it doesn't matter. Do the jokes, bitch. All right. I was wondering. I was with a friend on his podcast, and I had this thought. Uh, we hadn't met each other a couple of times, but not too well. We're still getting acquainted. But I was just curious at this point in our friendship what his first impressions of me were. I thought you were funny. You're interesting because you got like this low energy thing, but you still are silly, and it made me laugh. And when people make me laugh, it's like, yeah, I'm interested. That's cool. What was your first impressions of me? That was what I was saying. Did that oh, not make I could, sense what I, I was saying? I couldn't tell, yeah. 
You couldn't tell what? I couldn't tell if we, we were still doing like a thing, if I should be like responding. Oh, um, yeah. I was still treating it like we're on stage. I'm, at this point, I'm figuring no, but anybody that's still here likes us. Yeah. You know, nobody's still listening. At, 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 if they didn't like what was before, they're going to love you know, no, but I feel like people, episode. people who don't like stuff, they watch longer. I think that makes sense. It's not that if you don't like something, if you hate something, if it, if it, if it, if it gives a visceral chemical response to your body, it doesn't have to be pleasurable. It could still be masochism or just interest in like banding together with your other consciousnesses or other people to hate something together. Like when you're rooting against a team, yeah. to, you know, oh, boo that team. But if it's just like, I don't care. I don't think people listen. Yeah, I, guess I don't think right. anyone's gonna hate this. Yeah, I think at at worst, people can be like, "What was the, why? Just you know, why did you go so long?" But I haven't been high in a while. I'm opposite somebody who is letting me be. You know, I feel safe with, and it's it's nice. You know, if I didn't have to poop, it would be great. Yeah. Is there anything else? I was wondering what your first impressions of me were. Oh, I, that's what I said when I was yelling. It was that uh, you're funny. I think that you're funny when, when I think somebody's... It was. I mean, I, I can't give you anything more complex than that. Yeah. You made me laugh. And you don't... You know, I don't think it's 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 a coincidence that, I, that I'm attracted to people that don't do a whole big look at me. But mm-hmm. instead, when you're looking at them, you're like, yeah, that's good. Uh, so it was just, you know, it's easy. You're, I assumed you'd be easy to be around, but... I just like that you're funny. Yeah. It's not much more. There's not much more to it than that. But now getting to know you a little bit more or more specifically, because I don't think you've said more than 20 words during this podcast. What? And that's my fault. No, I'm, I'm, I didn't mean to insult okay. you. I meant I'm just talking a lot. Yeah. Is, uh, yeah, it feels, you know, it feels safe. It feels easy to play. Good. Also, weed is unbelievable. I can't smoke or do any weed. I get you like too. super fucked up. Like I, I get really in my head. I start to think that I'm drooling or that I shit my Are pants. Are you drooling? Did Not you right shit now. your pants? No, I'm saying do you think you did because you did, or it's those multiple realities we were talking about. Multiple realities. I feel as though I have shit my pants or drooled. Even though you didn't do either. No, but it feels that way, and so when I'm high, I just start like patting my cheek to, you know, wipe you, off the drool. But drool goes down unless you're on a pillow. It wouldn't go to the side of your cheek. Why but would you drool like this? Well, it's just kind of covering the bases. Because like if you drool, it's small. But if you just dab it, then it kind of like uh, spreads out. So it's easier to wipe off. I don't know. If, I don't think you drool like this. Well, when like I'm high. Like a handlebar high, mustache. When I'm high, I drool like But you that. said you don't drool. I know. But when I'm high, I think I'm drooling like this. So you think you're drooling outside of the physics of a drool. Yes. That should be the name of your special. Outside the physics of a drool. Okay. You didn't. You didn't fill in the blank, which was podcasting and converse the difference between podcasting and conversations is slash are um no one's watching a conversation i disagree hmm you know can i tell you um did you hear me yeah i don't want this to be on the podcast no, so I, can hear you. I many 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 conversations i have i am a, 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 a small percent but one that has great vision of me is watching the conversation from over there. Mm. So when I'm having a conversation with somebody, a lot of times I am acting for this guy. Yeah. And he, I know, would think, by he, I don't just mean me, I mean everybody that's watching, because everybody's watching, because we exist, so people will see this. Wouldn't it be funny if... So then I'm having a conversation with somebody and I, I say something that... In my head, it would be funny because that's what that guy would think. But this person isn't watching from here. This person is watching right with here. Mm-hmm. So they're too close to it. Mm-hmm. And they go, that's not funny. Or that's that's invasive. Or you know, you're crossing a boundary. I don't like this. And I'm thinking like, but wait a minute. And then I found out that a lot of people don't see that guy. I do a lot better when people see that guy. Mm. Do you see that guy? Do you watch the conversation? Yeah, yeah, but I mean, in the sense of podcasting, it's like uh, people can go back and rewatch the conversation, whereas that guy just has a memory of the conversation. Oh, but what happens if they rewatch? What's the downside or the upside? 
Um, I I don't know. It, does there need to be a downside or upside for the? Well, you're saying you're saying if since you feel it's different. Oh, I get really in my head. I get really because uh, because of them in my head. Yeah. Will you try and be present with me and harmonize as best as you can for a moment? Because I yeah. think this will help. You know, eight ball or fastball, one of the two. I don't know which one. It's something ball. Were you out? Were you out of my? Was I out of my? Was I out of my head? Was I out of my mind? Oh, I love Why that should song. I have ever been so blind? I was waiting for an indication. It was hard to find. Could you do that with me? I don't know what that song is. Was I out, out of my, my head? Was I out, out of my mind? mind? Could you harmonize though? I mean, it sounded great, but harmonize third or fifth? Two, three, four. Was, was I, I out of no. my head? Then why'd you say you can? And that's what I'm getting at. Because I had a lot of confidence before. Then just was the first time not harmonizing. The first time you didn't even really go with me. Well, I don't know the song. I thought I did. I don't know it. Harmonizing is. What do you know? Um. Oh, I was listening to Margaritaville, but I don't know if you can. Um. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Or should we do ne- uh, Neon Moon by Brooks and Dunn? How does that go? When the sun goes down on my side of town. I don't know it, but I could tr- do this. Do that again. Okay. When da, da. Go ahead. I'm going to harmonize. Do it one more time. Should I go the You're same? You're going to say the melody and then uh, harmonizing is is layering. But it's should I do a, it at the same voice? Because I was kind of almost doing Do it wherever what? you want to do it. Okay. Now, let me hear it. When the sun goes down on my side of town. Do that again. When, when the, the sun, sun goes down on my side, side of town. That is perfect harmony. Okay. Okay. Was I out of my head? Was I out of my mind? You do this. Was I out of my head? Was I out of my mind? You do that. Was I out of my head? Was I out of my mind? Mind. I don't think this is too different than a conversation. Although I think you would have left a while ago if the cameras weren't on. No, I think I would have like, uh, I don't know. I probably would have stuck around longer. Right. How long have we right now? It's it's a long one. Oh. Sometimes when I have podcasts that are long, the, the the last month I've been doing these, they've all been over two hours. And sometimes people say like, leave them wanting more. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, I don't know, man. I didn't want to stop. Do you ever like cut them off at a certain yeah, time and then put yeah. them on Patreon, the rest of it? Sometimes I do. Or sometimes I do. Or sometimes I'll be like, I oh, will end it, but I want to talk to you about blah, 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 but we'll put that on Patreon. Mm. Sometimes I do that. Yeah. But, you know, like, this is my once to twice a week time to interact with somebody. And also, I'm new into the living room. This is, I've only done a few of these so it's far. It's really nice. It's so much better than being out on the balcony, which is so much better than Zoom, which, by the way, is why I didn't do yours. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well after having me on your podcast, would you still do my podcast? Once I get my second shot. Okay. Um, and then I have a joke for that too. Okay. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. Uh, so I got both my vax shots. Uh, so I'm fully vaccinated and boy, are my arms tired. So, and it's a, it's kind of just a little joke that I'm trying to get into, uh, selling shirts that say, boy, are my arms tired. So I'm just really kind of pushing those. Yeah, I think that's good. Because that's like I'm making fun of you or harmonizing. <laughs> do you have uh, any siblings? I do, but that's something I don't want to talk much about. But I have an older brother. Oh, really? Yeah. I feel like that, what you just did, reminded, like I don't have any brothers, but I feel like I, I was your little sister in that moment. Oh, that's so interesting. Not. <laughs> Anything else? Little sis? I want to go home. All right. We could end it. Okay. Thank you so much for coming over. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. But before we go, there are two questions I ask every guest. Okay. First question is, boxers or briefs? Briefs. Second question is, would you rather have M&M's, a Tootsie Roll, or a Gobstopper every day for the rest of your life? M&M's. That's Ali Makovsky. Makovsky? Yeah. Makovsky. And this was part one. Stick around for the rest of the podcast. <laughs> Now we'll put in the uh, theme song here. And uh, now what do you want to talk about? Um, what are you doing the rest of the day? No, you don't like small talk. Yeah, it's okay. I was kidding. I think that was a good ending. We can 
keep going. You said you want to go home. I don't want to. I, was just, I mean, I can do whatever. Do you have any fucking ass on this menu that I can fuck? You can't do that. 